We'll add some more to our design in a moment. But first, let's make what we have look better. Right now, in item row.swift, our item's name and price have the same font size. We can actually bring the name up a little bit more bold and more clearly than the price where it stands out using the font modifier, which accepts any of Apple's built-in dynamic type font sizes. So here we could say, use the item name with a font of dot headline, and it becomes a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder, so it stands out from the price below. As for this image here, the picture of our maple French toaster is here, um, it, a little bit of love, could look nicer again than it does right now. For example, we could apply a clip shape modifier that has to be clipped to a circle shape. So I'll say our image is item thumbnail image with a clip shape of circle. And there we go, it becomes circular. Or we could say uh, I could add, add a clip shape modifier and then add an overlay modifier on top to place a shape on top of the picture. For example, we could say add a clip shape circle and then an overlay of that of another circle, and I'll stroke this in a gray color with a line width of two. A very, very faint gray line around it. If I zoom in, you'll see it there. There's a gray line around it like that. Small, but nice. Okay, that's enough styling for now. Let's look at something more complicated. If you look at menu.json over here, all our data, you're gonna see that each item on our menu has a list of restrictions attached to it. Uh, dietary requirements we have. Uh, let's go up to the mains, perhaps we might see some more. So here is a, a G for this thing contains gluten. Uh, there's an N, this thing has nuts inside it. Uh, we have V for being vegetarian friendly and so on. And we can use these to make little colored icons representing what the food has inside it at a glance, showing zero or more of these icons at a single go in each row as appropriate. To do this, First, we want to have an, a, a dictionary of colors we'll use for each restriction type. So one for N, one for D, one for V, and so forth. So over an item row, I'm gonna say that we have a new colors dictionary. This will be a string color, like this. And we'll now say uh, for D, we have uh, the purple color. Purple, like that. For G, we'll say uh, we have black, and then for N, we have red, uh, for S, we have blue, and V, we'll have green. So they all have different ways of showing what the restrictions or requirements are around this particular food. Now, we can add a, a loop over these restrictions with another for each and put each one into a text view saying D and purple or G and black and similar. So I want you to put this after the V stack. We'll say uh, for each item restrictions, one restriction comes in, that. I'll do text of restriction. So here uh, we have code that won't compile. You can see it saying, wait a minute, um, we've, we've got this thing and it's, it's uh, looping over an array of restrictions. It wants uh, identifiable things, as you saw earlier. It has to know how to identify each item uniquely inside the loop. And we solved that before with menu item by saying, actually, uh, you conform to identifiable. That worked great. That used the ID property to conform to the protocol. Here though, we have strings. Simple strings. If you look at our menu JSON over here, it's just G and V or N and V or D and V or whatever, um, or D, G and V. There's, there's no actual type here other than string, and so there's no ID property we can use here. Instead, we need something else. We need to tell Swift that the string itself is the identifier for each item. This is done by using an ID of backslash dot self. We're saying each string is guaranteed to be unique. So we can say for each item restrictions, ID of backslash dot self. And with that, our code will work again. And now you can see we have G and V for maple French toast. It contains gluten and is, is vegetarian friendly. Um, that's obviously pretty dull though. So we can spice it up with some modifiers. I'm gonna say that this text has a font of caption. And then I will do a font weight 
of black. So extra bold. Then I'll add a bit of padding around it. I'll do exactly five points of spacing around them. I'll give it a background using that dictionary. So I'll say read the colors dictionary using whatever restriction text we have. If we can't find it, use uh, black by default. Then a clip shape of circle. And then a foreground color of white. So the text stands out neatly. You can see G and V down there in the bottom right corner now looking quite nice. So we've got a small, bold font, white text, colored background, circular shape, and a little bit of spacing around it so the text circles aren't too near. We're gonna do one more thing before we're done with the design of this list row, which is we're gonna force the restriction items here to be spaced apart from the rest of our row. So it isn't all crammed in to the center. I want most on the left with restrictions on the right clearly marked. SwiftUI has a dedicated view type for this called a spacer. I want you to place it just before the for each for the restrictions right here. Just say spacer like that. And it acts as a big spring pushing views around it to either side. So it'll take up all the available free space that's not being used right now. So the pictures on the far left and the restrictions on the far right. Uh, go ahead and run the project now, see what you think. It should look pretty good. There we go. You can see the restriction colors nice and varied, nice and bright on there. And the whole thing is really coming together.